stadium lights The three birds before I have time My heart racing like it's fourth and five On a little way Saturday night. Welcome back to another episode of Mizzou Storytellers. I'm Dave Matter with Mizzou Athletics. I never introduced myself at the beginning. That I know. It's weird. like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm ready now. And you're Loretta and Jones. And I'm Loretta Jones. From Mizzou Athletics. You know, I was originally broadcast journalism, so. Were you? Yeah. I didn't know that. You know, I think I did know that, actually. I'm lying. Um... I, the, at the beginning, when we started this podcast, the idea was we were going to be not, we were talking to each other and not the audience. So hence no introductions, <laughs> but maybe it is good to introduce ourselves. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not introducing myself to you. It's to our millions of listeners. Yes. Or Nor to producer Steve. Just the millions of listeners. The mil- Just the yes. millions of listeners. Millions. Yes. Yes. So, so we'll add that in now. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a great guest today, um, a fun a fun guest, somebody we've known a long time. Um, at least I've known a long time, but not in this working capacity not necessarily a long time because i haven't been here a long time no but before that you guys both now we're not going to acknowledge the game because the game didn't happen it's a race for our memories but you both had an experience going to college station texas recently we did we did. we're not yep. even it for some for some event i don't know what it was just event. A, a complete coincidence that we were both there at the exact same time so what did you think was this first time in college station it was well, my first time so, yeah. i mean it was my first time as a fan right because you've been down there, there as a student athlete yes 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 I've been there many times. It's been a while. Uh, I've been to. Uh, oh, look at that subtle flex. I well, I've, I've been, been there, there many but times. it's been a while. <laughs> it's, it's not my favorite place to go. I'll put it that way. Um, been to basketball games there, football games. I've been to Yale practice. Did you guys happen to go to a Yale practice? Yes. yes. I did not. I, I did. We were we... in Houston for the Friday night. Oh. Yeah. So the midnight Yale practice. We went what to was midnight Yale. Is that something you think we could replicate here at Mizzou? I would prefer not to. <laughs> <laughs> it is something very unique to Texas A&M. Let's just put it that way. Absolutely. A quick Google search. You will find the YouTube video that will tell you everything you need to know. <laughs> it is it? Well, I'm glad you got to experience it, it. You know, and that's that's what I said. So myself and my other friends who just happened to also work here that were with me on this completely personal trip. Um, <laughs> we all said <laughs> we all said that we were glad that we went don't know that it would be a repeat activity <laughs> yeah yeah it's it is something that even if it's not our tradition obviously it's not but it is what makes college athletics so unique well it it was really so cool. you can I mean, appreciate that part of it so I guess. kyle field is essentially tied for the fourth largest college football stadium in the country yeah okay and we had taken a tour of the stadium that day we had learned all about it. it it's quite impressive it really is and so the fact that they open that up every single mm-hmm. night before a home game for the public, just anyone can yeah. come, and they get thirty to 40,000 people there. It was it was impressive. That's mm-hmm. what was, I think, most impressive. Yeah, it's just part of the experience yes. of the weekend, um, you know, where our fans don't have that, and it's probably a good thing. There's other things to do in Columbia <laughs> on a Friday night <laughs> yes. before, uh, before game day. So I'm glad you got to experience that. I don't know what happened on Saturday, and... Uh, we probably don't even have to get into that. Um, just no. flew back though, and you're back back here safely. That's mm-hmm. that's all that matters. Yes, made it back in time to <laughs> celebrate my birthday. Actually. Oh, that's right! Yeah. Birthday. Happy birthday! Your birthday mm-hmm. was October Sunday, sixth, which mm-hmm. was Sunday mm-hmm. this week. Yes. I don't know when people will be listening to this, Correct. but it was. That's why I just dropped the date three yeah. days ago. Okay, well, happy birthday! Well, thanks. Almost it's the same day as Travis Kelsey. When was oh, his? Was his Saturday. Saturday. Oh. I have a couple Swifties in my family, so I'm oh. well aware of okay. birthdays of, okay. of those. I did not know yeah. that one. I I did watch the Monday Night Football game, but I did not know that it was. <laughs> it's been a big week for Mizzou birthdays. We got Lorette on Sunday, Miss mm-hmm. Sandy Matthews on Monday. Monday, Tuesday, wrestling coach Brian Smith's birthday. Oh, that's right. I saw that today. Yes, yes. That's so cool. It is. Lots of birthdays. Monday the 7th was Sandy's birthday? It yeah. was, yeah. Oh, you know what else I found through the... Happy the belated one- birthday, Sandy. Yeah, the wonders of social media. I have the same birthday as another Mizzou volleyball alum. Really? Yeah, Caitlin Morse, Caitlin Wilson Morse. Okay, so. how about that? Yeah. Speaking of Sandy, I told her last week she's due to be a guest on Mizzou yes. Storytellers. She was resistant, but I said, we will get you over here. Well, I think if our millions of fans just start blasting that on social media, that they want to see Sandy Matthew. <laughs> Let's get yeah. Sandy mm-hmm. in the some, hot seat. If we can find, if, if we can if we can get her away from her desk for an hour, she's very busy. She, like, makes the whole system run. I bet if we asked her boss. Oh, I bet he would yeah. give her an hour <laughs> off, maybe. <laughs> 
I know him, so we can, we can maybe try. I know him. I, oh my God, me too. That's crazy. <laughs> Who is he? I mean, he, he found an hour to be in here. Maybe right? he can maybe find an hour for Sandy too. Um, yep, been talking to it. We are going to get this guest list organized, aren't we? Yes. We have all these people that want to come on, but then when it's time to schedule them, Every and time. when it's time to find you, me, and producer Steve an, an hour where we're free, easier said than done. Yeah. Yeah, there's just a lot going on. There's a lot going going on. on. But I will say, yeah, our our texts back and forth, hey, who should we ask? And we have this wonderful list. And it's like, (laughs) let's see when they're available. Oh, we're not available at the same time. (laughs) We're getting there. After crossover season, it might get a little bit more open. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Okay. It's basketball season coming up in less than 30 days. So. (laughs) I know that our guest, that would probably, I would say it would stress him out, but as we may find out nothing really stresses out today's guest he is At mr not, cool not outwardly no <laughs> no yeah he's definitely stressing out I'm oh sure. absolutely <laughs> I, you I just think never know it we don't know yeah we definitely need to ask him about his his sleep schedule i don't think that he <laughs> sleeps very many hours a night well hey, it doesn't show man that guy is mr cool okay should we just get to our guest let's do it this episode of mizzou storytellers on the inside mizzou athletics podcast is brought to you by sophia's and addison's restaurants Sophia's and Addison's restaurants are great local spots to visit before or after all Mizzou home games. Addison's has two locations in Southwest and downtown Columbia and features over 20 beers on tap, including local brewers and, of course, their famous Nachos Bianco. So remember, before or after the game, stop by Addison's. He's a tiger. He's a cardinal. He's a ticket master. He's a Tennessee kid. He's Mizzou's associate director of athletics for ticket operations, Brent Lewis. And he's this week's guest on Mizzou Storytellers. Welcome, Brent. Uh, thanks for having me. Welcome, Brent. Welcome to Historic Hearn Center. Uh, it's been a while since I've been over here. I was going to ask, have you been here before? I, I have. <laughs> I didn't get lost like the last time that I was over here, I think. But uh, we've had some meetings every once in a while over here, so it feels good to be back. Yeah. So. I, f- I felt bad initially when I texted Brent to ask him to come on the show because the only time people text Brent, not only time, but... Sometimes I feel like it's to ask a favor with my tickets. I always I'm say logged hi. out. I always say hi first. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is not about my tickets. It's about the podcast. Can you come on and join us to talk about tickets and Brent? Yes. Yeah, it's it's amazing how many people have found my number again um, <laughs> the past couple of years. So I thought, so it's good. I, I have a lot of new friends or old friends, I guess. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing the amount of people that have reached out to me. I can only imagine how that number is exponentially larger for you. Yeah, it's a good problem to have. Yeah, Yeah. that is the trouble with Facebook. People find you and they're like, hey, Mizzou's having a great season. You work there. Tickets? Can I get some? Yeah. I can only imagine what that's like for you. Yes, yeah. Um, It's probably more annoying for my wife because it's, (laughs) you know, 9 o'clock at night and then there's this (laughs) random text message and it's like, hey, I haven't heard from you in a while. And I'm like, like, what are you doing? I was like, i got to respond back. Like, they need something for this weekend or something along those lines. So it's it's fun. Uh Uh-huh. Well, we will get into your story, but like right now, let's just kick it off. Like you are the ticket. You said a ticket master. He's the ticket oh, master. Yes, he is the, the ticket master. Um, how how did you become the ticket guy at Mizzou? I know it's a long story, but like, what? That's that's your thing, and you're and you're as good at anything in this department as the one thing you're good at. That didn't make sense. No, but you know what I mean. He is yeah. absolutely amazing. We'll just say that. How how did that become? your thing uh you know it's it wasn't when i got into athletics or um i went to southeast missouri state university they had a sport management degree Mm -hmm. and and i tell folks like when you go into that degree there's not a ticketing 101 class or how to build a manifest or or now how to do mobile ticketing and it was more just sport related background but the best part about that program was that it required you to do an internship. Mm -hmm. Um, So when it was time to go to internships, I always thought that I wanted to work in Major League Baseball. And I think everybody that goes to CMO in the sport management degree, they're like, oh, I'm going to be GM of the St. Louis Cardinals. And (laughs) you quickly learn like, eh, no, that's that's probably not the right path to uh, to become a GM. And so you kind of start figuring out what you like. And, And in sports, you can go a thousand different ways. But as it was time to come look for my internship, I wanted to work minor league baseball. And what I was finding was that a lot of the internships start happening um, in minor league ball in like March or April as those seasons are starting. Well, at SEMO, the semester didn't end until May, so I wasn't going to be able to start anywhere until kind of that June, that early June time frame. So 
I found an internship that was in a ticket operations internship with the Kane County Cougars, who were at the time the single A affiliate for the Oakland Athletics. Mm. And they were about an hour outside of Chicago, an hour west of Chicago. And on the weekends, they were drawn anywhere from 11 to 14,000 people wow. to their games. So it was, a, it was a fan base that they were probably all Cubs fans, but they weren't going to go to Wrigley every, um, every weeknight. So right. this was a great option to, uh, to go catch a ball game and, and bring your family out to, to affordable a game. So that lasted for about three months. I served they're mainly doing ticket operations. I also got a little marketing or, or tarp pulling or whatever was, <laughs> was needed. And then um, applied for a job at Mizzou, uh, assistant director of ticket ops. And I grew up a Mizzou fan. Kind of thought I was going to come to school here, but uh, it ended up working out that, that I got this job. And that was in October 2005 as assistant director of ticket ops. And uh, learned from the best and Marty Finn and just kind of yeah. worked my way up and right place, right time and, and kept proving myself. And then have been overseeing our ticket operations since February of 2013. Wow. Wow. And you have been, I mean, if you look at everybody in the department, there's not many that have been here longer than you have. No. I mean, that's, it's pretty amazing, but also like it speaks to, I, th I think the job that you do, how many different ADs you've worked under, uh, and and also just how the industry, the the ticket business has evolved and changed so much. You've kind of seen it all in in almost twenty years. Yeah, if you would have told me ten years ago that we wouldn't be printing tickets and sending stuff out via <laughs> UPS or or mail or having to do lines at will call and and everything was mobile based and everybody just had everything on their phone, I probably wouldn't have believed you. But yes, I mean it's it's really evolved, um, and especially evolved over the last five years. Um, you know, COVID made us rip the Band-Aid off, and it, it really forced us to be a lot more flexible when, you know, we had five home games that 2020 season, and I think only one happened as scheduled, and, and that was the very yeah. first game of the season, and then we added LSU in there. If we wouldn't have been able to do mobile ticketing, like, we, it allowed us to, to be able to kind of just change the date on a ticket, and then it just appeared in, yeah. in somebody's account. So it really allowed us to be flexible um, and allows us to be – a lot more efficient with dealing with the number of tickets that we are. Mm -hmm. Well, and it, there's so many nuances that go into what you do. Like you said, it's just you're kind of rolling with the punches as they happen. And as with anything in college athletics, even ticketing is evolving. So there, there's a science behind the art, right? Like it's not just we have 65,000 tickets that I have to sell, and it's the first 65,000 people to ask for them. Right. There, uh, you know, we, we've, we're on a streak now of uh, I think it's going to be 10 straight sellouts for Mizzou football and um, the next one's Auburn. We have Oklahoma and we're close on, on Arkansas, but you're right, Loretta. Like it's, it's very nuanced where you have different buckets that you're trying to, to make sure you're accommodating. And, and with us, it's, you know, it's our season ticket holders. It's our single game ticket holders. It's our students. Uh, but then we also have to account for student block seating and our Hill seating and then recruits and high school coaches and all these different things that some of that's not coming in until, you know, the week of, so you're just making sure that you're planning appropriately and having enough to take care of those that, that need to make sh make sure that they're into the game. Oh, my yeah. gosh, I can't believe that somebody would contact you the week of a game needing <laughs> tickets for somebody. Yes, and, and you know, it's it's one of those, <laughs> we put out the, the biggest fire first, so if, if that ticket need is not the biggest fire until uh, until Friday at about 11.59 before, the, before game day tomorrow, and I just always reassure, okay, I promise you it will be there by the, by the time gates open. So I think just, that's, uh, that's my favorite Brent Lewis answer is, hey, when do you think this ticket will be in their account? And he says before, if like kickoffs at 3 o'clock, he's like before 2.59. And, <laughs> and those that have worked with me understand like my, my sarcasm and, and how it goes. Sometimes I have to check myself and remember that uh, uh, I should probably be not as short when I respond. To <laughs> no, it's but, fine. Uh, um, I, I think maybe the outside perception is that on your desk you have 62,000 tickets and oh, we sell 25,000 season tickets so you move those off and then you've got these left and then we got 12,000 student tickets so you move those off and they just sit there but there's a real strategy behind how we're moving tickets how when the sales open when sections open I'm not going to have you divulge all your secrets but how much have you learned over the years on how to how to kind of work the system so it's in our favor but also you know provide our fans with with you know, tickets to be able to watch our teams play. Right. There's any you know, there's certainly certain things that go into it from a pricing strategy and, and what sections and, and we use a lot of our 
our secondary uh, ticket sales data that we see out there to help kind of drive some of our pricing decisions. But, you know, there's also certain things that you have to be responsible for, whether that's, you know, a bucket I forgot to mention was our visiting team tickets. And, yeah. and they're allowed a certain number and they have a certain number of days prior to the game that they can return tickets. So depending on, you know, where those seats are, you got to have an idea of, okay, we've already announced a sellout, but we're going to get 600 tickets back from XYZ school. Yeah. What are we going to do with these? How are we going to price them? And how can we make sure that for our student athletes, that it's a, the best experience that they can have that our stands are full and that they're not coming out and seeing an empty section because we weren't able to move those tickets yeah. last minute. But certainly, you know, we start planning. I don't think there's ever a day that we don't go – that we don't spend time on football. And so we are starting in January working on our pricing, working on our season ticket pricing, and how many season tickets are we going to sell for this year? How many of those are we going to turn into single games? How, how many are we going to hold you know, for groups? Um, we, we're coming up on homecoming, and homecoming is very important to the University of Missouri, and there are a lot of things that we do with campus um, and to make homecoming successful. So they have different blocks of tickets that, that we're holding for them. Well, if we're holding those for this game, then that means it's you know 500 that we have available for the Arkansas game that are that are coming up. So just making sure that we have good relationships with with those around the state that that we're building theme days with our sales department and and different things like that to help continue to drive yeah. sales. But also, you want that fan to keep coming back. You don't want it to just be one game this year and right. we don't see them again for 10 years. So you want something that they can build, whether that turns into a season ticket or it's, hey, I know we have a youth sports day every every year at Mizzou. I want to make sure that my kid's a part of that. So we'll, we'll come to that this year and then make sure it's on our schedule for next year. Yeah. What is – okay, this is not our script, so I'm ad-libbing here. That's okay. I know you roam all over the place on game days because uh, you're, you're, you're working and you're making sure everything's flowing smoothly in the ticket office and, and all that, make sure lines are getting in, the gates are open. What is the best seat in the house for Brent Lewis to watch? If you could pick one seat, if you could move that fan from that seat, and that, this is where I want to watch Mizzou football game, where, where is that seat? Yeah, I, I really like my um, personal season tickets at section 118, row 34. I will not be sitting there, so don't come find me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but usually my family is sitting there. And, and the reason I like that, row 34 is right off the concourse, um, but you have a great angle to the entire um, to the entire stadium. So it's a little bit yeah. more um, in the north end zone, but it's just high enough that you can see everything, see the plays develop, uh, but also have a great view of both the scoreboards. There you go. All right, from like the expert. I, I've become a big fan of the north end zone myself. Yes. So You spend a lot of time over there watching from well, that vantage point. A little bit, point. So little bit yeah. Next year will be a little bit different for you. I don't game day. actually <laughs> know what I'm going to do with myself next year when I am not stuck in the north. I'll give you a hard hat. You can go to work. <laughs> I would love that. If I can still watch it from there, I will suit up as necessary. Uh, well, we just had our last game at the Gate One Ticket Office, so oh, yeah. I've worked now 19 years in the Gate One Ticket Office on game days, and for the final three games as we prepare for the North End Zone expansion, yeah. that Gate One Ticket Office will be offline. So, right, um, so it's a it's a little. Uh, my game days are going to look a little bit different as we kind of float between our west and east ticket offices a little bit more, but it's kind of it, it's going to be weird walking by that and not going in and and seeing those nine windows and, and everything <laughs> that go into it. Oh, so. Weird. So, like you said, in 19 years, entering your 20th year, yes, okay, you've seen a lot of ups and downs in ticket sales. This has to be one of the most unprecedented years, correct? Yes, like, okay. and and I think back to, and you know, I think back to my first road game that I traveled with, and it was to um, University of New Mexico in 2006, and I had the opportunity to sit next to to Mike Alden on that bus ride back to the airport after we won. I'm like. And I was like, I was amped, like just jacked. My first row game, we win. And I was like, how do you do this like every game? He's like, you never get too high, you never get too low. So um, so I just always try to kind of keep that in my mind. And, you know, we have a job to do at the end of the day, whether we're selling out every single game or whether we have to get creative. And, and I don't know if it's easier to sell out every game or easier to just throw all this stuff together and, and make it work. There are challenges with – with each of those, but certainly, you know, I can think back to maybe one year that we had, um, one or two years that we had this kind of excitement. One of those was 2008, yeah. also, yep. also yeah. coming yep. off a of Cotton Bowl season, and the other was 2012 when we moved into the SEC, um, the SEC, and that was obviously a lot of excitement. You had Georgia and Alabama coming here, um, and you know, this year, the way that when we put single game tickets on sale in August and everything is just flying off the shelves, and anything we would open up. So I was talking about, hey, we got a couple hundred visiting team tickets back for, you know, the first couple games. And as soon as you open those up, 
they're gone. So yeah. it's it's great to have this demand and know that you know people are excited to come watch watch our football program. Well, that's and, awesome. And as we move forward with the Memorial Stadium Improvement Project, as we work on that north end zone, that's just going to open up more seats for you to sell. How how do you see your job changing with that project? First, it'll be kind of figuring out what we have available to sell. So that's you know a mix of the hill seats that are still going to be there, but also our premium seating options. So we'll work um, on getting a manifest built out, exactly how many seats it um, is going to hold in each of those areas and what kind of access they're going to have to, to different spots so to make sure that it flows and that their tickets have the right section row seats and, and different things on that. And then we'll work with our TSF staff and, and premium seating on, on getting that dropped in folks' accounts and, and making sure that all of our maps online and everything reflect uh, reflect those areas so that, that if we do have single game ticket availability in any of those spots that our fans have access to it. Cool. All right, Brent. So let's go back in time a little bit. Where, where all did you live growing up? Really just one place. I grew up in Jackson, Missouri. And that's it. So uh, I stayed there till I was 22. So I lived at home throughout college because SEMO was <coughs> really 10 close, to 15 right? minutes yeah. away. Mm-hmm. So it didn't make sense really. Uh, my parents were like, you can move out, but you're on. You're responsible for your own bills at that point. It's like, you know what? I got a. I got a pretty good setup here. Um, so I graduated in May of 2005, and I think three days later, for the first time in my life, I moved out of my house and moved up to Geneva, Illinois, and was living in an apartment. I was like, what did I do? Like, I, I, I don't know if I really like this. And I was. Uh, I think I was spending more money than I was making uh, in that uh, by by renting that apartment. But it was a little one bedroom uh apartment and didn't offer a whole lot but that was okay we were uh we were at the ballpark most nights yeah so. interesting yeah. and your your parents are teachers uh Is yes right? so and, and uh, your sister right and and my sister so my yeah. sister lives here in columbia her and her husband and their uh three daughters um they're here in columbia and then my parents were both teachers so my mom taught for 30 years and then my dad just retired uh, last year after 45 years of teaching, wow. and then I think he's still subbing like four days a week. So, uh, so he loves it. He loves being around it. So, was it was it a rebellion? I absolutely don't want to go into the family business, or yes, I think I, I you know, being around it and seeing what they did and, and teaching is a very, um, very demanding occupation, and, and seeing the phone calls and the parent teacher conferences and. And, and what they do is great, and, and how, they, how they teach kids. It, it was great to be a part of that, but I felt that I had seen enough of that um, being at home. So it was, it was nice to, to find something different to go to. So. so then we talked about you go from college to job minor league baseball, and it was, it was straight from there to Mizzou? Yes. So you didn't have, like, experience. Did you work at all in college athletics at SEMO? I, I did a few internships there. So I worked in our yeah. media relations department there. And – I kind of thought like this is where I was this is what was for me I mean it, it was you know 20 hours a week that we were putting in time there yeah um, mainly it was more just kind of volunteering and being around it at different things right and going to baseball games or going to basketball games and helping with that when I was at SEMO though I was in the marching band at SEMO so for four years I, I was a part of the Golden Eagles down there and that was my way of being around sports because certainly I couldn't play sports. I was not <laughs> realized pretty quickly I wasn't going to be any good at that. Um, so at the time, that was my way to be around sports and then found the sport management major. And then, hey, this is another way that I can um, continue to be around sports for, yeah. uh, for the rest of my life. All right, I'm going to test Loretta's expert research skills here. You played the trombone. Yes. That is, yeah, that is correct. Oh, so. Don't try me. Yeah. Don't try me. I know what I'm doing. Tiger fans, say aloha to Hawaiian bros where the island-inspired flavors are positively delicious. You'll love favorites like Huli Huli Chicken, Luau Pig, and the delectable Dole Soft Serve. Hawaiian Bros, just south of campus on Grindstone Parkway, or order at hawaiianbros.com. So have you and Eric Morrison discussed this? When he was in Marching Mizzou, could we have like a, a, could we have like a competition who can, who can play their was marching the, instrument was he the trombone also he was trumpet he I was believe. trumpet oh. yes. yeah. We, yeah we talked about it um eric morrison actually hired me in october of 05 oh wow uh, so he was uh he was my kind of first uh big boss i guess uh at mizzou athletics but that was one of the interview questions when i was interviewing he, he was telling me about his time at marching mizzou was, what instrument do you play no just that we were talking <laughs> about you know marching band and, and different things like that so 
We need to put a band together here. We could. See who I else haven't in played the in department. like 20 years, but I'm trying to think of anybody else I would know in the office. I'm going to, I will not further else? that research. <laughs> I will not further that research. We need to see if we can get this together. Um, yeah. One of the other fun facts that I came across when doing my research for this, I found out that you were in the marching band. Uh, you traveled with the Missourian Music Ambassadors? Uh, correct. To so, six different countries? Uh, it was. Uh, <laughs> It was a 16-day trip overseas, so like six to seven different countries. Yeah. Um, we played a concert in each of those countries and got to travel with four of my best friends from high school. So it was between our junior and senior year of high school. And it was a great way to, to see something that I never thought that we'd be able – like I'd be able to see just traveling um, overseas and being a part of that. that so, so it was cool. a really cool opportunity. So six to seven. Like like there was an average. Maybe well, one of them didn't count. Liechtenstein or? was like a stopover. <laughs> so we were in it for like ten minutes. And basically it was so like – no concert there. It was like get out of the bus, take a bathroom break, get a snack, and then get back in the bus. And that was the – like you could – 360 and you saw the entire country and then yeah. and then we got out of there so yeah se- seven countries we played a concert in six very cool we we already had band day this year but have you ever like been tempted to go down on the field and like <laughs> has jackson ever been here for <laughs> or or when we play semo like you the, could get out there and i you know they re- relive the glory they or. haven't i did uh i did talk to uh amy over at marching mizzou the i guess it was september 21st game they had the Earth, Wind, and Fire show. Yes, oh, yeah. Uh, and they were playing some songs that we had uh, that we had marched to back in uh, back in college, and it, it kind of brought back some uh, some good memories. <laughs> some memories. So, yeah. so, are you evaluating like the marching bands on game days? I, I, like, I am not. Like I, not. yeah, I stay out of that spot. I don't. Uh, I don't want people evaluating my uh, ticket operations. So I, I'll, I'll I'll leave that to the experts You've over there. They do fabulous that. job. I remember I told this to Eric Morrison recently because we were talking about his time in marching Mizzou and. Uh, it was back. Coach Pinkle was here. I was covering the Tigers, and Band Day was coming up. And one of the student reporters asked Coach Pinkle in his press conference, um, "Coach, did you uh, play an instrument in high school?" And he oh. said, "No, I played football." <laughs> <laughs> I can hear Gary saying so that. So he did yeah. not. He did, he, was, he did not celebrate Band Day like uh, like he properly should have. Yeah. All right. So what else? What else do we need to learn about? Um, I would like to know if you could, if you could think back to like a specific date, can you pinpoint when you first became a super fan of Justin Timberlake? <laughs> <laughs> Did not know where that was going. Uh, well, you you introduced me as like Tennessee kid, and, and like people are probably confused. Like, no, I thought you grew up in Missouri. Like, what yes. are you talking about, Tennessee kid? So yes, uh, probably the best concert I've ever been to was Justin Timberlake. Which one? Uh, the 2015, the 2020 experience oh, one. That was, I was one. that was at Sprint Center, T-Mobile in Kansas yep. City. I was um, there, and it was really good. So yeah. I probably saw you. I probably waved. I, you yeah. really big. We sorry. didn't know each other yeah. yet, yes. but that's probably what happened. The exact date that I became a it it probably be when him and Chris Stapleton had their little collab oh, on yeah. like the ACM Awards. Oh. And hearing him sing, I didn't like. Obviously, you know of NSYNC and everything else, and then you hear that, and you're just like. And he, he's a really good musician. Mm-hmm. And seeing him on stage after that is, like, really impressive of how great uh, of musician he is and everything that goes into the concerts. Yeah. Um, I just I want people to know I this was not me, like, making yeah. fun of you. This <laughs> no. Is no, hey. And if they walk into my office, they'll yes. see the picture of Justin Timberlake there because yes. my coworkers <laughs> think it's funny. Um, so it, it was a birthday gift, so I have to sit it right there and – you know, I mean, it's it's fine. It's a great talking point. Yeah. Um, and now we have a few folks from Memphis um, yeah. who who maybe have a connection with Justin Timberlake. So another good talking point, a great way for me to meet some of our new employees that are around yeah. here. We need to um, think about some revenue generation ideas. How about Justin Timberlake concert? Brent, you can you can work with our Memphis folks and be, bring them to Mizzou I, Arena. That would that'd be great. I mean, so Chris Stapleton's right been here. Like, <laughs> our, we might we might get in trouble. So. <laughs> Like, you're not supposed to be back yeah. here. Sorry. <laughs> no, we work here. I feel like that scene from Wayne's World when they've got their backstage passes. <laughs> I mean, Chris Stapleton's we played here. here. He can bring him back. Yeah. yeah. You think Laird knows him? Oh. We'll probably. find out. Okay. He's probably got a contact for him. Yeah. I would, probably on his phone. I think I would personally sell all of those tickets to myself. Like, yes. It would just be a personal concert. Yeah. Just Me and Brent Lewis. No <laughs> spouses. <laughs> no Private nothing. concert. Yeah. Private concert. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. Maybe we'd let Dave come. I don't um, know. But yes, really, really good concert. I, I enjoy going. I, it's hard to get away and, and not like 
see what other folks are doing. Like I find when I go to Cardinal games or Blues games, you're always kind of watching what other teams are doing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With concerts, we don't have a ton of concerts, so you you tend to enjoy it a, a little bit different. Yeah. So also, I always joke like when we do host concerts. Sometimes I think fans' experience on whether they enjoy the game or not depends on whether your team won or lost. So, yeah, right. Um, you know, when we get our surveys back or we get in, like, your complaints are different if you won or, or if you lost. Sure, With concerts, yeah. for the most part, everybody has a great time at a concert. Like, they heard yeah. all their favorite songs. Yep. They saw their artists. They were close up. They waved to them. They got a guitar pick or whatever. Everybody always has a good time at a concert. So um, it's just something completely different that that's fun to be yeah, a part that's of. that's a great point. Yeah. What up? We're, we're jumping all over the place here, but when you started at Mizzou, what was your role initially? Like, what did you work with specific teams, or were you just whatever Marty had you do, you did? Yeah, so I started with uh, men's basketball was the main team that, that I was helping with their ticket operations. And, and when I started in mid-October, it was the second year of Mizzou Arena. So it wow. was, you know, at that point, we got to get season tickets out. We got to get receipts done. We have two weeks to do this. And... You know, probably what worked best for me is I just got thrown to the fire. So I had no other way. This was the way that you were like, we had to learn how to get stuff done because the season was starting and, and Marty at that time was focused on football and, and I was, I was in charge of men's basketball. So that, that's what I was hired for. I also had soccer and and gymnastics that that we were having some ticket oversight um, on as well. So I always kind of men's basketball was probably my, my first love here. And and that's really what I grew up on. I mean, the first Mizzou team that I remember was the 93, 94 team. And the day that Norm Stewart like walked in my office to pick up his bragging rights (laughs) tickets, I was like, this, this is not real life. I mean, that was, uh, that was, that was really cool, but I still, you know, enjoy being around our men's team. It's still, you know, it's, it's obviously not as the event wise, it's not as big as football. It's two, three hour event. Um, but still some of my favorite events that we get to work is, is that Bragg and Rights game yeah. in, in St. Louis and um, the Kansas games that we get to be a part of. Okay, so there's not many people in, in the department who have Quinn Snyder stories. This is Storytellers, so do you have one that you can share? Because you overlap for a year? We yeah. were we probably overlap for about six months. Okay, so, <laughs> so you um, came here at, yeah, at a good, you know, not, good time for you. Yeah, it, it, was, it was good. Um, you know, it was... That coaching staff was really was really good to me, yeah. and it was the first coaching staff really that that I got a chance yeah. to work with. So you're just kind of developing those relationships, and then by by March you were uh, those relationships were gone, and you were right. you were starting over. But no no stories that really stand out. I think I was too young to really uh, know exactly what was going on. No, on, the ins and outs yet. So. Yeah, well, you you, just... you mentioned something that I'm sure a lot of people don't think about with you know a director of ticket sales is your relationship with the head coaches. You know, so when we bring a new coach in, what does that process look like for you? Like, how do you get to, to know the program and the coaching staff and, and gain their trust? So, so we'll start with the director of operations. So that's, that's kind of being going to be the one, the person that helps with our player ticket allotments, with our coaching allotments, how we do recruiting. And that's where those initial conversations start. And then from there, you kind of get to know, um, you get to know the, the coaching staff. And really what's been great for me and where you really get to know is, or these bowl trips or these postseason trips yeah. where it's just a little bit smaller group. There's not as many folks that are that are needing time from from everybody. So that's really where you kind of get a chance to know these coaching staffs and get to know them on a, a little bit different level um, than just being the coach and, and just being the guy that you see on the sideline. Yeah. Are we at rapid fire time yet? I think we are. Okay, why don't you get a start? All right, so one of the things that we do on here is we have five rapid fire questions okay. that we will ask you. I want you to just answer as quickly as you can with whatever comes to your brain first. Okay. Um, so first one is best meal in Columbia. Not restaurant, meal. It's really tough. When you've lived here as long, you pick up a lot. <laughs> I, I'm going Greek salad at G&D Pizza. Ooh, Ooh, all right. Okay. Old school. Okay. Yeah. Um, what's a bucket list sporting event to attend that you haven't attended yet? Bucket list now would be, I think Super Bowl would be a bucket list. Okay. So Any, really at cool. what location? Like where? I really want to see SoFi. Okay. I, I think that would be a cool location to go to. Yeah. That would be Vegas cool. seems too crazy. There's too much other stuff going on. Um, I think SoFi would be it. Okay. Interesting. Um, favorite Mizzou sports memory? 2007 Mizzou, Kansas at Arrowhead oh, to become yes. number one. I mean, oh gosh, two I was there too. two years into your 
like to my career and sure, your yeah. football team is number one and we're playing in the Big 12 championship the next week. Like I joke that, you know, as the as the players were down on the field with their trophy, like I'm up in the because no one was sure who was playing in the Big 12 championship game. Yeah. The winner of that is either Kansas or Mizzou. Right. So the Big 12 dropped off the tickets. So 8000 tickets were dropped <laughs> oh, off in the wow. Arrowhead ticket office. So the winner of that game had to go pick up the tickets for the next week because wow. this is before mobile <laughs> tickets or, so i walked out of the stadium with two boxes of tickets for the big 12 championship awesome. game. i was gonna ask like what did they put them like in? two titanium so it, yeah, suitcases it's just, it's just like... in a cardboard box so it was me and my like, like the duffel bags the like you know yeah, it, cash it's like ocean's going, 11 yes. you're just walking you're walking out with the, the duffel bag so oh man um, so yeah that was that was probably my favorite event that's yeah. pretty cool um where are we okay best vacation spot you've taken we totally forgot to we have not talked about uh, Brent's lovely wife, Beth. Oh, you, yes, you brought her up. So we'll get we'll answer the question, then uh, we'll get back to yeah. Beth. Okay, uh, best vacation spot is Maui. Uh, we went there with basketball in 2014 for the Maui invite, mm-hmm. and then uh, we went there for our honeymoon as well. Okay. So we loved it so much. I was on we got to go back. Yeah. So that was, a, that was a good trip. Oh. Cool. Uh, okay, so best advice you have ever been given? I think I mentioned it. It's It's – what Mike Alden said, never get too high, never get too low. And in this, in this career, obviously it's, it's easy to get low after a loss. And, um, after a big win, you can, you know, be ecstatic, but like I said, at the end of the day, you got a job to do. Yeah. Um, and your job doesn't really change whether you win or you lose. You got to make sure that that you're staying professional and, and then everything all you're getting everything done so that, the the fan experience is top notch and everybody can access their tickets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's great. Um, all right, let's tell us about your wife. Where'd you guys meet? You've been married for like seven years. Eight seven years. years. It'll okay. be eight in June. So we we met through a mutual friend um, here at Mizzou. We actually met at the George Strait concert at oh. Mizzou Arena. So that was 2010, I yeah. think that was, and then we started dating in 2012, and then got married in 2017. So. Yeah. Uh, it's, she's been great. Um, we really enjoy our time together and it's been good for work life balance as well. Otherwise I'd probably just spend most of the nights in the office getting, uh, <laughs> getting work done. So uh, it's, uh, it's really great to have someone to come home to. And, and she is, she's been really good for me. We love to travel and, and spend time with our friends and, and it's just, it's, it's a really, really great. You great guys person. do travel so, a lot. Yes. yes. Where have you been lately? Uh, so for... We, we had our Thursday game um, yeah. to start the season, and then right after that we went to Salt Lake City to visit some friends out there. So it was kind of that little reward trip for something to yeah. – I need something to look forward to yeah. so that we can get through <laughs> this. Um, so Salt Lake City's kind of been our spot to uh, to go to, and then um, we did a Vegas trip for uh, for my wife's 40th birthday, which, oh, was, okay. which was a lot of fun. And then we did a Disney trip this past June with uh, my sister, dad, um, my brother-in-law, and then – their three daughters, so Elsie, Ensley, and Edie. So a lot of fun with that. Yeah, a lot of steps nice. that trip too. No, I can so, imagine. Now, yeah. one question that we we have asked people before, we've talked about it. Uh, do you ever think you and Beth could work together? I would say no. <laughs> would, would she also say no? she would also <laughs> say no? And you know, during the during the work from home COVID experiment. <laughs> I was working from home for a few weeks there before we were allowed to start coming back in the office and she would do some work at home stuff and maybe we just need a bigger house, but we were finding that we were just like, I'd be on a call, she'd be on a call. It was just, it was a little bit too much, but I think our personalities are um, enough different that we'd probably drive each other crazy if we were working together. So <laughs> it's, it's good that we don't. So. All right. We ready? Yes. So we have, you have a choice here. So we've got the, and the... I think you're the first person that's been given a choice. In a while. Since yeah. season one. Oh, yeah. Since I've this been is, on the show. We're only yeah. acknowledging season two. <laughs> okay. Here are your choices. Uh, those are those are great. Uh, good stories behind one of them. Uh, we're, not we're, the headshot. Uh, not, not the headshot. I don't remember when that. We're, we're going to go with the one on the right. So okay. that's that's a good one. All right. Well, that probably is, sums up my mood most of the time. So what so. is the story here? As, as you come put it on the bulletin board. That took some Facebook stalking. Yes. Um, we need the story. The story. So it was a, you know, it was it was a night with friends, a happy hour at Flat Branch. 
You don't look so happy in the picture. But you know, it was a long day. <laughs> long day in the ticket office. <laughs> look at that. All right. Good spot there, too. Well, Brent, this was a lot of fun. I want to say, like, Mike Alden's advice to you, like, I, you've you've really, like, embodied it because you are, I'm in a lot of meetings with you, and, like, you are, like, the voice of reason. You're, like, yes. the calm force behind everything. And I think it really, it's good when you have a lot of new people, and I include myself in that. I'm new here. Um, when we have new administrators and maybe people don't understand how things work or how things historically have worked, like, you always just bring this sense of, of calm and like, mm -hmm. it's going to be okay. We know what we're doing here. I know what I'm doing, but it's never about you. Um, but you have like this institutional knowledge that I think it's, it's so valuable when there's so many moving parts and there's so much transition. Um, and it's, it's, it, it's not just cause you've been here a long time. I think cause you've been really invested in what's happened mm -hmm. here and, and incredibly smart, but it, it's not just about being here. It's about the, the job you've done. So I've, I really, I've, I knew you before I started working here, but I've really come to respect you so much more getting to know you and working with you well thank you i'm probably the pessimist in the room i'm always i'm that ops guy that's like okay well we're gonna have to figure this out but but thank you no no i mean it man you're you're it's great to work with you and to, and to learn there's I, I think you could like you could run this department you've done it for so long and and in your spot and uh and that i think the ticket job it touches so many areas yes so you're exposed to so many different things and and can problem solve i think better than anyone we work with. I think you just have a great feel for how college athletics works, especially this place. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's ever been a time that I have gone to you and the answer hasn't been some form of we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I I like to be that Oz behind the curtain where it's like, <laughs> uh, and, and we have an external, I mean, we're, we're facing the public quite yeah. a bit, but I kind of like to, like in our job, we're behind the curtain, we'll make sure that everything gets figured out. We'll figure out the puzzle pieces. And, you know, sometimes you have to say no, like, and, I, I think back to, to Whit Babcock, who says, you know, customer service sometimes isn't always telling everybody yes. It's telling people no in the right way yeah. of, hey, we can't do it this way. But mm -hmm. my goal is to make sure that, that our staffs are successful and that whether that's from a TSF standpoint of I want to make sure that everybody has what they need to be successful and help raise money or whether it's our coaches coming to us as we have a recruit that signed up last minute. How, how do we make sure that we have a spot for him and, yeah. and that we're able to get this get this person in and and my goal is to make sure that we're able to to accommodate what what is thrown in us from whether it's a customer service standpoint or whether it's whether it's working with our student athletes and, and our staff that's great well thanks for coming on yeah, thanks, thanks for having you're me you're the best oh, thank you all right this episode of Mizzou storytellers on the inside Mizzou athletics podcast is brought to you by shelter insurance Ranked number one in customer satisfaction for auto insurance in the central region by J.D. Power five out of the last six years. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Well, that was a lot of fun. Yes. I learned that I don't know that I have the calm in me to be in charge of tickets <laughs> anywhere at any time. I just love hearing how it works because, like, you, you, we know no more than, like, somebody on the outside would know just how the world of ticketing works. I, I still think it's only a glimpse, but I mean, it, it is, it, like you said, your question was great. It's like, there's an art and a science to it. There's a lot of strategy. Um, you're dealing with a high volume of tickets and, and it's a, such an important part of what we do. I mean, our revenue hinges so much on ticket sales and Brent is the guy. Yeah. And especially in a year like this with football success, you know, he really does become the most popular guy in the room. Yeah. Most popular. And one of the, really one of the most important, cause like it is so crucial um, and you know, we're talking about pricing, we're talking about, um, you know, group sales and, and everything else that goes along with it. Um, he is, he's behind all of that. It's, it's such a big role and he's such a good person too. Well, and he put it perfectly. There's just all these buckets to fill yeah. and he's been doing it for so long now. I think it just becomes second nature. And now that we've moved to digital ticketing, mm -hmm. it, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I do. I, I wasn't kidding. Like I really do think there might be this impression that there's like thousands of tickets yes. on his desk and he's just like, well, put so three over there and five over here. What's and funny is before we went to digital ticketing, there, there was, <laughs> it literally was, like it really that. was. Yeah. You walk in and he's just got stacks of blank <laughs> tickets because then he has to like push them through yeah. for different groups. And, yeah. you know, obviously he has his, his, uh, his auxiliary staff that helps him with the majority of the general public right. and a lot of the season tickets. But he, it's also incredible to me. I didn't, ask me about this we didn't talk about this the amount of season ticket holders and donors that he gets to know himself yeah like it's just it begins Absolutely. with just knowing names but then actually getting to know who these people oh yeah are. and when you're around 20 19 20 years like you 
you really become a fixture and then you become kind of embedded with the fan base or the Absolutely. donor base, I should say, and the, the season ticket sales um, folks. So yeah, it's, he, he plays a huge role here. And I should, I meant to ask him this. I totally forgot. Like, I wonder if Brent is like a ticket collector, like in other tickets he has, oh. are you, do you save tickets? Like I, so I, back when there were tickets? Yes. Yeah, so I, I used to save some here and there, uh, Dave has started, sorry, obviously not you, my yeah. husband, Dave, obviously. Uh, Dave Jones, um, has started saving tickets from things that are the first for the kids. Yeah, yeah. So he saved their first Mizzou baseball tickets, and he saved these tickets we got when we took them on a train, yeah. you know, just little things like that. If I dig around in my, well, I don't have a home office anymore, my son took it over, but like, <laughs> boxes of stuff I, i'll keep like movie tickets from mm -hmm. molly and my first dates and things like that and oh, we took definitely. their kids to see when star wars the sequels came out those kind of things. concert tickets i save um and that's where I the digital tickets my... make me sad i know sometimes. it is a little yeah. disappointing sometimes if you actually savor those things but there's the next generation don't even know what we're talking about but that's where brent lewis like, is what are there have been times where I, I need a printed ticket for something and he'll do yeah. it yeah well he's the man he can do everything okay so we talked about College Station, that strange trip. We have no idea why you went there, but no. you did. Mm -hmm. um, talk to Brent. Uh, I do have a couple questions. Put out, put out the, the question on social media. We got one, or we yes. got two. I should say, we got two. We got two. Um, here's the one. How about this? Is from Mark. How about the Mizzou cross country team and the improvement since new coaching staff was put in place? Go Tigers! It's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah, that's I had the the pleasure of going to their Gaines Creek Invitational. Mm, I was there. Some alumni out there. Uh, and that was just really cool. Yeah, it was. And I can I can speak. Now, the programs are doing great. The men's team is, is doing really well. I think fourth. I was looking this up. Fourth in the, uh, in the region. Fourth right? in the Midwest region right now. And as we record this, they've they've got a big meet coming up at Alabama. And then mm -hmm. uh, postseason will be right around the corner. Um, Kyle, uh, Kyle Levenmore has done a really good job with that program. Of course, Coach Holter. Um, but that course really is special. And, and I'm now like a – a cross country parent because my yes. son is on the team at Rockbridge and Rockbridge is perennial state power. So just last weekend we were in Indiana at the, um, at the Terre Haute course, which is considered like one of the, the crown jewels of college well, and high school cross country the best was, we opened ours. and I guess, and it was really nice. It was a great race. Rockbridge JV shout out. They did win uh, boys JV, I should mm -hmm. say. Uh, and there were teams from all over the Midwest there, but our course Gans is top of the line i mean it's 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 the best i've seen and it's because it's a real cross-country course it's yes. not like a golf course that doubles as a cross-country right, course they, and it's funny that you mentioned that some of the alumni that came in for the the gans creek race they were talking about um just different courses they would go to and they were all yeah. you know, golf courses or then there'd be sand traps right. or they would be out on like an actual trail and there's gravel yeah you know and they uh one of them was talking about how this was news to me. Apparently, in large cross country races, they have catchers, people that are like along the, like towards the end of the course, so oh, people there to like catch people yeah, who might yeah. fall. Um, the finish line can be uh, um, quite a sight. Right, and yeah. so they were talking about that. There was there's some course in northern Arizona um, that has so much gravel on it that they have like they have their track team spaced out throughout to help yeah. catch people so that they don't tear up their their knees. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. The the course that I was just at that we were just at there, it was some rumbling going on and I don't I should have looked this up before I say it so I'm not going to disparage the course but they were talking that the course is actually a landfill oh it didn't smell great oh so well, then that makes would sense <laughs> it makes sense let's let's hope that it is because yeah. otherwise there's another problem but they did so. do fireworks at the end oh which was really cool, cool. describe yeah. to our listeners what it smelled like um, <laughs> no I'm kidding nothing good <laughs> I'll tell you that much and then you just had like thousands of kids sweaty kids running around everywhere we'll and have uh, to talk to Coach Halter about the fireworks for when we host the it was pretty cool it was ni nice and... Lynn. they did the uh, they did the award ceremony at the end and then fireworks went off and I was at we did a tailgate um, all the parents did the Rockbridge parents um, because we're there all day and night it's like oh a cross country tailgate it was fun yeah we had tents and everything we uh, we had it was hard to hard to watch college football because the Wi-Fi wasn't <laughs> great. Um, but we kept track of some of the other games that went on. Uh, but it was fun. Good. It was great. So I don't we I don't know if we answered the question very well, but 
we well, kind of went on a tangent. It, just, um, I, it was, I think, it was just kind of a like a rhetorical. Hey, yeah. how about that cross country? And we should note we are hosting that, and we talked about it when we had Coach Alger mm-hmm. here. Twenty twenty five NCAA Division One National Championships for cross country will be right here in Columbia, and then twenty twenty seven we'll mm-hmm. have the regional. So the round, the postseason round, right before the championship. We just found so, that out last week. Yeah, last week. Really exciting. Um, okay, I got another question here. What is your favorite Mizzou homecoming tradition? And we have a lot. And this is something that I've had to explain to a lot of our newcomers yeah. that have joined the department. We we talk about homecoming a lot. And I'm like, guys, we talk about it a lot because it really is a big deal. Yes. And you're going to learn. Your first one is going to be quite the learning experience that we take this very seriously here. Yes. It is, it's, I would say it's a holiday, but it's a bigger than a holiday because it's like it it's, is. it's a week long at least. It is. Um, man. I mean, when I was a student, well, when, when I was a student athlete first, I didn't really get to do a whole lot of the homecoming yeah. stuff because we usually played. Right. Um, Big 12, we played Wednesday, Saturdays. Um, so Did you ever have to go on the road during it? Yeah. Oh, so you missed homecoming. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, a bummer. Yeah, so I missed it. Um, but then when I, when I stopped playing, uh, I had a really good friend who was Greek, and she was very involved in her sorority. And so I was, like, the best friend yeah. that, like, went with her to to pomp the their floats i went with her to, i went to watch their skits that they would do at jesse at jesse hall um but i think it's got to be the parade yeah it for me it has to be the parade house decks are pretty cool because of how unique they are i was yeah. trying to explain it to someone the other day and if you haven't seem seen confused. them it's really hard yeah. to explain <laughs> i was like well it's a skit but not really a skit but they get judged on it and it matches the theme of their float yeah um but it's that's actually really fun to take the kids to it is, um, it but is. i would say the parade yeah, I would put the parade up there. Uh, we the, the Matter family has the same spot we go to every year. We've never missed it since our kids were born. I'm afraid we might have to miss this year, though, because th- we have a little football game that kicks off um, pretty yeah. close. To, thank you to our uh, partners in the conference putting us giving us a game uh, before noon. <laughs> that it's gonna, it's going to be really hard to make both for for me because i have to be at the stadium right. so early now if fans can fans can yeah. do them both yeah i just won't be able to do it um I'll but have, so i, I might have, have to make i have to make both work we have yeah. a we have a letter winners float i haven't parade. given up yet but i'll be there at least but they put us we are always very close to the beginning yeah, of the parade we're usually true. within like one to two maybe three floats behind the initial greek floats yeah yeah. Um, so we get going pretty quick. Yeah, but it, I mean, fans sh- can, or will be able to do both. There's no Absolutely. doubt. Absolutely. Um, but if you have to be at the stadium very early for work purposes, <laughs> it might be a little bit of a challenge. Uh, hopefully, there's there's good weather. Also, let's not forget it isn't. We're not going to talk politics here, but it is an election year. Correct. So everybody running for any kind of office in the state of Missouri will will have will, will be taking so part usual. more so in than the usual. in the in the parade too. So it'll be uh, a lengthy parade. But I, I love the parade. You're right. It's it's always. Uh, it's it feels like a holiday you know it does and it's it's why my kids now every time they hear parade they think it's going to be huge with like (laughs) candy and (laughs) treats and everything my kids actually get to walk in the parade this year oh really for adventure club oh fun yeah their after school program my my son jackson has done it before because his lacrosse team used to walk in the parade so he's been in it a few times i was in it in in college i might have been on the uh my fraternity's uh float i might have driven the tractor Oh my gosh! I they did not know you float. were in a fraternity. Oh yeah, yeah. Which one were you in? I was you said a tractor. I want to the tractor that, that yeah. pulls no, the. I say the, you said tractor like I was going to make a guess, but now I'm no, not. no, no. I was not farmhouse. I was a okay. uh, Sigep. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah. proud member. Uh, homecoming was a big deal. Yeah, did house decks all of that. Yeah, it was a lot of a lot of it memories. All stars, it starts. You get the marriage party. And then you guys like pomp the the things together. Yeah, like, yeah. that was a. Uh, I don't. That, those aren't necessarily <laughs> fond memories. <laughs> no, I could tell stories, but maybe a different episode. Maybe we can have a homecoming extravaganza episode. Uh, One thing we're we're doing this year, it's really cool. So on so on Sunday before homecoming starts, is that the thirteenth? Yes. We're we're gonna light the dome for the week of homecoming, nice. and the official dome lighter is. The one and only Mr. Eliah Drinkwitz. Ooh. He will be there along with, I believe, Coach Pynchon and Coach Gates, and all three okay. of them, I believe, are going to light the dome for the week to get homecoming week officially kicked off. What time is that? I believe that's 6 p.m. Sunday night, the 13th. Okay. So it'll be after the Mizzou volleyball game? Yes. Versus Tennessee? After, yes. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm not speaking out of school, but I did just maybe break some news on the podcast that that I didn't is the know plan. About it. <laughs> 
I think it's actually on I the think, Homecoming website. So uh, no, I think public by the time the calendar, so. by the time our millions of listeners hear this, yes. it will already be and broadcast. If, and, if, and if plans change, I will. We can do a new episode, <laughs> right, Steve? It's all right. It's not bad to have breaking news on the podcast. <laughs> no, that's okay. pretty cool. Yeah, new traditions. We have so many great ones, but when you can start new ones, even better. All right. We have anything else to discuss? Um, Check your notes. Yeah. Oh, we talked about fall Saturdays with no home football. Yeah. I, we kind of did talk about it, though. Uh, just things that are happening in our life. Well, I didn't. I haven't. I think I've only had like one Saturday yeah. this fall without football. The bye week. Yeah. I don't remember what I did on the bye week. It was glorious. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Those four home games in a row, that was. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't a, change That was quite it, a bump. I yeah. wouldn't either. No, it was great. It was a lot of fun. But then all of a sudden you get to a bye week or a road game when I'm not traveling. And I didn't mm-hmm. travel this past game. You apparently went to College Station for something. I'm not sure what. But you were on the road. I was. Um, so you didn't get to enjoy a, a Saturday in Columbia without football. But maybe we'll eventually get some fall weather. It looks like we might for homecoming, actually. Great. So I'm going to keep my fingers yeah. crossed that it that, all comes together that, that tracks. Hopefully it will hold the, you to it. Yeah. As you should. All right. Meteorologist Loretta Jones. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I think we're done then. Are we done? I think so. Okay. Everyone has a beautiful story to tell as long as you're willing to listen. This is Mizzou Storytellers. I'm Loretta Jones. I'm Dave Matter. We'll talk to you next week.